Hello. Today, Bards in the Basement will be doing a reading of the author to her book by Anne Bradstreet. Anne Bradstreet Street was the first female published um, poet from America. In 1650, her book of poetry, The Tenth Muse Lately Sprung Up in America, was published. Um, she'll address the publication of this book in the first few lines of her of the poem we will be reading today. Uh, the title of the book is significant. It's, it's, it's playful, and it connects Bradstreet to a, a classical literature, to a larger um, body of literature, if you will. Um, Zeus, the, the god Zeus, had nine daughters, nine muses, the muse of poetry, the muse of history, the muse of tragedy, and so on. Um, and so the title of this book suggests that uh, here's the 10th Buse, and it's Ad Anne Bradstreet from America. Um, so that's a, a, a nice, uh, nice title for her first collection of poetry. Um, Bradstreet um, is a, a, a Puritan poet. Uh, also, she is a mother and a housewife, and you'll see how she pulls from the domestic sphere um, for her similes, metaphors, and symbols. Um, they, they, they say, write about what you know, and so she knows about um, um, the, the domestic world of the 17th century, and she uses them wonderfully um, as metaphors and symbols um, to address larger concerns. Um, so please, after you, you read through this poem with me, find some more of her poetry and read through that poetry as well. Um, on, on the screen, you'll see the left-hand side, the poem itself, the right-hand side, some literary terms. I'll, I'll walk through the literary terms real quick here um, um, so you have an idea when I go through the poem what I'm talking about. Um, first, you have the, the title of the book, which I mentioned. Then the, 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 the extended metaphor. Um, an extended metaphor is a metaphor that unfolds across multiple lines or even paragraphs of a text. Uh, in, this, in this poem, the extended metaphor is comparing her book, the poet is comparing her book to having a child. And um, and trying to clean that child up, trying to clean up that poem, um, sometimes slightly embarrassed by that child's behavior, that child's appearance. Um, and we'll see how the poet sometimes is embarrassed by um, her, her, her poetic skills. So we have the extended metaphor here. That extended metaphor is, is, is not uncommon in Puritan poetry. Please check out Edward Taylor. Um, he has some nice uses of extended metaphor um, um, in his poetry. Um, couplets, um, we have um, the rhyming couplets in this poem. Brain remains, so a couplet, two lines of verse, usually the same meter and joined by rhyme to form a unit. So we have, here we do have couplets. And the meters are, for the most part, are the next, next definition, iambic pentameter, a line of verse with five metrical feet each consisting of one short or, or unstressed syllable followed by one long or stressed syllable. Um, so the iamb iambic pentameter is the most common uh, meter in, liter in, in English literature. Um, Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Once again, Shakespeare's, um, Shakespeare's writing, um, um, his sonnets are, are an iambic pentameter. Um, and, and and Bradstreet uses iambic pentameter in this poem, but she does break the rules here and there for um, um, artistic reasons, um, um, thematic reasons, and uh, I'll point out a, a, an example of that as we go through. This also is an example of an apostrophe. So if you're looking at the, the next word apostrophe, typically we think of apostrophe as, as something from grammar, but it's also a figure of speech in which the poet addresses the absent person, an abstract idea or thing. Um, Keats is to autumn, um, um, ode to a Grecian urn, if you will. Um, o moon that hangs above, um, my love that has departed. So the apostrophe is when the poet or the speaker of the poem addresses a person, an idea or a thing, and in doing so, brings that person, idea, or thing to presence in the poem. So an apostrophe. Uh, personification, given human qualities to uh, uh, inanimate object, non-human object. Um, here we'll have the comparison uh, of the book to the child. Um, personification is, is another form of metaphor, if you will. Um, the book is, is running. Um, the book is talking. Um, so those ideas of personif uh, those are ideas of personific examples of personification. Of course, pun. Um, we have a, a pun is a joke that makes a, a play on words. Um, I am often accused of, of being a punster. I'm not sure if I should take that as a compliment. Oscar Wilde says the lowest form of humor is the, the pun. Um, so I guess I have a low form of humor. But those are some of the literary terms that I will be mentioning as I, as I walk through this poem. And I'm not sure why 
I just lost my poem. Where did it go? Let me go back over here. All right, I'm back. For some reason, the poem just disappeared. Don't be, don't be frightened by that. So let's read through the poem, um, and I will then walk you through the poem after we hear the poem in full um, one time. The Author to Her Book by Anne Bradstreet. Thou ill-formed offspring of my feeble brain, who after birth didst by my side remain, till snatched from thence by friends less wise than true, who thee abroad exposed to public view, made thee in rags halting to the press to trudge, while errors were not lessened, all may judge. At thy return my blushing was not small, my rambling brat in print should mother call. I cast thee by as one unfit for light, thy visage was so irksome in my sight. Yet, being my own, at length affection would thy blemishes amend, if so I could. I washed thy face, but more defects I saw, and rubbing off a spot still made a flaw. I stretched thy joints to make the even feet, yet still thou runnest more hobbling than is meet. In better dress to trim thee was my mind, but not save homespun cloth I the house I find. In this array, mongst vulgars, mayest thou roam. In critics' hands, beware thou dost not come, and take thy, thy way where yet thou art not known. If for thy father asked, say thou hast none, and for thy mother, she was ala she alas was is poor, which caused her thus to send thee out of door. Ha! <laughs> nice poem. Um, and um, we'll see how this is a, an extended metaphor um, from start to finish. And so we have the speaker of the poem, Bradstreet, um, uh, is, 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 self-deprecating, self-effacing humor. Um, she she, she uh, puts herself down as a, as a poet, as a, as a writer, um, in a poem that's outstanding. So um, it's kind of like wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Oh, I can't write that well, but look at me write that well, um, as I complain about not being able to write. Um, so let, 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 let's see how she has some fun here and how we're supposed to chuckle a little bit as we read this poem. Um, and yet she, 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 she brings up the whole writing process um, with this poem. Um, so, thou ill-formed offspring of my feeble brain, who after birth didst by my side remain. Oh, uh, ill-formed offspring. This book that I've, I, I've created, this feeble offspring of my brain, um, it's ill-formed. Um, I, I wrote this poem, I gave birth to this poem, or this collection of poetry, um, and it was ill-formed, um, because my brain is feeble, kind of like putting herself down, uh, making fun of her, her feeble brain, yet, at the same time, there's nothing, nothing um, um, out of place in this poem, if you will. Um, and so, I uh, gave in birth to, she gave birth to um, this collection of poetry. That's not uncommon um, for writers, even male writers, to talk about giving birth to um, um, uh, a work of literature. Certainly, um, it's a different type of, uh, of pain, um, yeah, and, um, and, and, and still a, a pain, but I, I'm, I'm sure that some might um, beg to differ. Um, but here we have Bradstreet making that comparison. Um, Till snatched from thence by friends less wise than true, who exposed, who thee abroad exposed to public view. And here's the, how the book was published. Um, she wasn't planning on publishing her book of poetry, but some of her friends um, um, took the book, snatched the book, and, and brought it over to England where um, they had it published. Um, and so she, she kind of makes fun of them. That, uh, you're, you're less wise. You're not that smart, you friends, than, 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 than you are true. Um, if you're really smart and true, you wouldn't have published my book of poetry poetry. And, and here we have the kind of now, um, and she's been exposed to public view. Her, her poetry has been exposed, this, this feeble offspring that she gave birth to. Um, made thee in rags, halting to the press to trudge. Um, the word rags, um, one you could think of like the, the a cheaper uh, book cover, cloth book cover, but also made thee in rags that there's a poverty in her poetry because she's not a poet. 
Now, Bradstreet was, uh, was, uh, was, was not formally educated, but she grew up in a family that valued education. So as a, as a young girl, she was reading Homer and Ovid. So, um, so she was exposed to some great classical literature. Um, and but but uh, uh, the idea that made the in rags that I'm uh, that it's it's cheap it's 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 not good it it, it it's poverty poetry poetry um that that that's lacking if you will um, and so made the in rags um, I made you in rags not very good um, and then you do, took it to the press um, you trudged it to the press to be published where errors were not lessened all may judge and and when you published me you didn't fix any of the errors. They were not lessened. Actually, you're going to see all my, my errors um, in clear view. Next lines. At thy return, my blushing was not small. My rambling brat um, in print should mother call. Oh my gosh, was I blushing? I was. It was. I, I couldn't stop blushing. It was not small. It was a. Uh, I was constantly blushing about this, embarrassed by this by this collection of poetry. My rambling brat in print. My child that I gave birth to, my book of poetry that I birthed, is a rambling brat. A poet doesn't want their poetry to be rambling because it seems to be going in no particular direc direction. It, it suggests no control over, over, over language. Um, rambling brat in print. So my poem um, is like a child that just rambles all over the place, just um, spouting nonsense. And so... Um, she, she's making that comparison here. The speaker's making that comparison here. Should, should mother call, I cast thee by as one unfit for light. I don't want anybody to see my rambling brat. I don't want my, my child is dirty, messy, in rags. I don't want him or her in public view. My book of poetry is, is made in rags. I don't want it made, um, seen in public view. So um, unfit for sight. Thy visage was so irksome in my sight. Just to look at you, just to see you was irksome in my sight. Oh, I don't want to look at you, my rambling brat. My, my, you're all in, in, in rags um, and, and, and you, you, you're, you're feeble. Oh, no, I don't want to, I don't want people to look at you. Um, and so we, we kind of like have the, uh, there's, there's some uh, uh, fun here, some silliness here that you don't want to bring your child out because you're kind of embarrassed of the kid. You don't want to bring your book of poetry out because you're kind of embarrassed of your poetry. Yet, nice, nice, nice uh, um, conjunction there. Um, yet to suggest a, a shift. Yet, yet, hmm. Once again, yet you're mine, and I love you, if you will. Or yet you're mine. I'm, uh, you're my, my, my child, if you will. Um, I'm going to stand by you, you, you rambling brat. Yet. Being my own, at length affection would, would thy blemishes amend. Um, uh, uh, yet my own at late at length affection feelings thy blemishes amend um, if I could I, 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 I like you you're my child I, I have affection for you and so I'm going to try to amend your your blemishes uh, and here we get into the writing process um, a, a, anybody that goes back and tries to re re reimagine rewrite or edit their own work oh you you start fixing it amending it um, because you like it and then you find more errors if you will um, I washed thy face but more defects I saw maybe I fixed the word here I fixed the word there yet I now I got to change this word or this line of poem po, po, this line of the poem is really wonderful um, but when I change this line it just doesn't make sense so the thy blemishes amend I'm trying to fix the mistakes in my in my in my poems um, so washing thy face uh, being that editor but more defects I saw and rubbing off a spot still made a flaw. So I may have fixed this spot, but then I created another flaw. Ah, I stretched thy joints um, to make thy make the even feet. Um, so the once again the iambic pentameter, ten syllables per line. You want to have that lilting sound, thou ill-formed offspring of my feeble brain. And we don't read it like that because it would be silly. But that's the kind of like the 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 soft and hard. Um, rhythm of the iambic pentameter and there's usually 10 syllables per line per line and so going back to line 15 I stretch thy joints to make thy make the even feet there's 10 syllables in that line yet still thou runnest more hobbling than is meat 
That line has 11 syllables. So I tried to fix the meter. I tried to fix that, that iambic pentameter. Oh, 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 now I have 11 syllables. So that's a wonderful, wonderful um, two lines there, two couplets there, uh, a couplet there, excuse me. Uh, I stretch thy joints to make thee even feet, yet thou still thou runnest um, more hobbling than is meat. Um, so you go the, go to 11 syllables there, uh, which proves the point uh, of trying to fix, make an amend of the blemishes, because um, you may, have, may, may create more, you may rub off a spot here, but this still made another flaw that I'm fixing the joints here, but I'm, I'm, I'm adding a syllable to this line. The, the, the writing process, the frustration of the writing process. In better dress to trim thee was in my mind. How many of us have had that experience? How many of us have thought, oh, inside my head, this was a great story. This was a great poem. This was a great idea. So in better dress to trim thee was it was my mind. Inside my head, I, I pictured you differently. I, I thought you'd uh, you'd work better. Um, um, but once we we, we we create it, maybe it does. Our, our, what's in our mind isn't um, what we get on the on the paper. Um, but not, but not save homespun cloth. Now I like that because here is here here Brad Street is a, uh, uh, addressing that you know I I'm not going to be using classical illusion I might not be using um, the intellectual metaphors of of some of um, um, uh, my peers my poets that are published I have homespun cloth I have um, I I find I the house I find I find my similes my metaphors my views in the house in the home. Um, and that's why we have her comparing her book to a child. We have her um, referencing the rags, dressed in rags, clothing that child. Um, we have the reference to the brat, um, the rambling brat. Um, we, we have these, these need to wash the face, all these, these um, chores, if you will, that are part of the domestic sphere. And, and so now it's kind of like, hey, but not save. I don't have, in my mind, I don't have the, the classical training possibly, which she did, um, of other writers. Um, and so I must use the homespun cloth, the domestic cloth, the, 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 the metaphors and similes and symbols um, found in that world. And that's how I array it. In this array, amongst vulgars, mayest thou roam. Now, vulgars means common people, if you will. Um, uh, not, not vulgar, like a, uh, some, uh, today we think of vulgar as something grotesque. But here, um, Bradstreet is using it in this, amongst vulgars, the common people may roam. Um, and also uh, that, that, that my child's been made in a common way. Um, so it's like the, the, the book is dressed in rags, um, homespun cloth. It's common people poetry. It's common um, language, if you will. Also, the readers that are vulgar, they, you may roam amongst the, the, the readers that are vulgar. Please keep that, keep that um, um, in the forefront of your mind for the next line. Um, the roam amongst the, 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 the everyday person, the everyday um, reader that, that might uh, appreciate what I'm doing here. Because that sets up in critics' hands, uh, critics spelled um, 17th century style um, with the K-S. Um, so we have in critics' hands, though, the literary critic, the intellectual. Um, in critics' hands, be where thou does not come. Uh, hopefully the literary critics won't find you because they'll make fun of you because you were the creation of this woman who has a feeble brain, uh, who gave birth to this, this child that should have stayed um, hidden but was exposed. And then when exposed, we see the, the, the rags, we see the, 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 um, the writing that's unfit for light, um, we, we see the, the, how it needs to be washed and the joints um, fixed, um, and the meter better, better, better um, realized. Um, so we, we, we don't want this, or the speaker doesn't want this book to fall into the hands of literary critics because they may, they may make fun of it, they may um, knock it down. Now, once again, I mentioned at the very beginning the idea of self-effacing, um, um, putting, putting herself down or making jokes about her ability to write. But Anne Bradstreet is demonstrating that she understands iambic pentameter. She understands how similes and metaphors um, work in poetry. Um, and so she, she may put herself down in a poem that um, it works very well. Right, let, let's go to the, the conclusion of the poem. And take thy way 
where thou art art, art not known. If for thy father asked, thou sayest thou hadst none. Um, so so go your way. Um, and but if someone says, who's the father of this book of poetry? What man wrote this poetry? Um, if if someone asks about your father, say, ah, I don't have a father. Uh, I, I I have none. And for thy mother, she, alas, is poor, which caused her thus to send thee out the door. And so if ass say, oh, I have no father, no man would give birth to a poem like a poetry like this. Only a mother would. And, and my mother, she was, a, 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 alas, poor, and caused her, forced her to send thee out the door. Uh, and, and forced her to, to have me published uh, as possibly maybe someone would buy her book of poetry um, and she could make a little money off that that poetry uh, and we even know at the um, at the end of the poem where that she was caused thee to send out the door that no Bradstreet's friends snatched the book and, and had it published um, in, in, in in England for her um, so it wasn't that it was it was forced out the door but actually um, it was snuck out the door by friends. But we have that kind of like the joke at the end. Oh, no, the, just say that um, uh, your the mother was poor. And I, I, I like the idea of poor because the, the word poor goes with the word rags. Um, 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 and that, that, that the, 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 she's poor in talent. She's poor because she's, uh, 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 has a feeble brain. Um, and, 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 and we all know from having read the poem now that she is not poor in, in intellect, nor is she poor in her poetic execution. All right. Um, so we have that nice kind of like if I if I had in the, the right hand side diction, I could I could have word choice and just what words um, could we group together? Um, I think there's this idea of uh, these negative words um, connected to the poet, the speaker, the the the, the poem. Um, and some of those negative words has to do have to do with poverty and lacking, um, which Bradstreet proves once again, she is not poor in intellect nor in poetic um um, talents. So here's, here's a, a, a wonderful example of an extended metaphor um, that, that the child is compared to a, a, a book uh, or the book is compared to a child, excuse me. Um, and um, there's some fun and playfulness here. Um, when she when she uses the phrase, um, my rambling brat, don't think, oh my goodness, the mother calling her child a brat. Um, uh, she's calling her book of poetry a brat uh, that at times rambles. And you might be thinking, the bard in the basement is rambling right now. So I'll just um, end with um, uh, uh, an encouragement to go find some more poetry by Bradstreet and enjoy her writing. All right. Thank you.